Hello and welcome to episode one of the brand new WBBL review. Uh, I'm joined by Melita Emmanuel Carr. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, well, here we are, first episode. I'm very excited about this. Um, how are you feeling about it all? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. As soon as I seen your um, your tweet, I was like, "Yep, yeah, okay, definitely gonna gonna ask to be involved in this because it's nice to just get to talk about basketball." help promote the game and I definitely watched some of your interviews from last season as well so yes yeah, exciting times. A very exciting WBBL season as well for us um, a lot of change a lot of new players coming in um, new teams coming in. Yeah yeah all exciting I think the league's going to be so much better than last season I like I can already tell there's going to be a rush to see hit that top six. I, I can't give you too much of a prediction now because it's early days and I don't know how teams are going to gel, but it's exciting. It's exciting to have Sheffield back in the league this year and it's also exciting to welcome the Gloucester City Queens to the league. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, Sheffield's been one of the top teams um, in the WBBL or when it was D1 as well. So it should be interesting to see if they come back with a bang or if Gloucester's going to come and start with a bang as well. Well, I mean, I, I play for them, but I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> so how did your move to Gloucester come about? Was it was it something that was kind of talked about early on in the summer? Uh, it was probably about mid-summer. I started talking to the coach um, for me. I made the decision to come here because it's a, a new team and for me I wanted a fresh start as well coming back from my ACL injury and they're also focused on like life outside of basketball as well whether it's branding or um, just in terms of anything that I kind of want to do they're very supportive on it so I just thought it's a it's a great place for me if I want to settle down or just know that it's something that I have that I can come back to as well. How have you found Gloucester as a city? Yeah, it's not too bad. I put out a few tweets as well saying like, oh, I love this city. <laughs> so like, I was actually surprised. It's got everything that I, I need. So um, it doesn't feel like I'm too far away from London either because I can take the train, which is like an hour or 45 minutes away. So yeah, it's, it's not too bad. So we've got a bit of a podcast war going here though, haven't we, with the BBL show? Because obviously, Coach Coach J, uh, is him and Drew. We've got we've got theirs, so we 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 need to be better than them, right? Yeah, exactly. He actually mentioned he was like, "Well, you could have told me you was gonna go on there because I was going to start a WBBL show," and I'm like, "Sorry, we don't need that. <laughs> we got the review now. <laughs> we're good. We don't need another one." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did mention that you were perfect for, for a role as kind of a co-host of a podcast because you love to talk. Is that, is that right? Yeah, well he, well, he said that, but he is he literally doesn't stop. And then he will add his like jokes as well. So I'm like, yeah, I can definitely be a lot better than you are. Um, but also for me as well, it's nice because I know a lot of um, players in the league. So I feel like I can get a little bit of inside information because I feel like that's what kind of draws people in, like the little gossips here and there, little banters as well. And I'm pretty sure I'm cool with everyone, well, mostly everyone in the league, <laughs> apart from one that you know. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, like I feel like everyone will be fine with it just because we're just trying to make it more fun for and more enjoyable for, for the fans. Yeah, everyone loves a bit of gossip. <laughs> They'll, they'll pretend they don't, but they love a bit of gossip. Yeah, exactly. But I like to stay out of it. I'll usually just like sip my tea and be like, whoa. <laughs> I, mean, I guess one of the reasons I, I got involved in this is with two young daughters. And so I want kind of to give the players yourself and other players in the league a, a platform to to kind of show everyone how good how good women's basketball is. Um, because I think it's a bit of a sleeping sleeping giant in, in this country and obviously further afield. Yeah, exactly. And with your kids as well, like, so do they play a lot? Um, do you think they're going to carry it on as well? When I don't on? know. I, I, I possibly, we've got, a, we've got a little basket in the back garden, which we, we use occasionally. 
when Eva stops dancing, she loves dancing. So I think I think there might be a, in a few, couple of years, there might be a decision to be made at some point. <laughs> well, as long as they're connected as well, I think it, it's great to have parents like you as well to just be so keen on a sport that's not necessarily recognised. So I think for us players anyway, like it's nice to to have little stuff like this. It makes us feel wanted and valued. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit of our plans for the season then. Um, I know we are going to go kind of against each other in a predictions competition this season. Yep, yep. So <laughs> I feel like got... we should place a bet on this. <laughs> oh, well, that might be for someone else to decide what, what, could, what could a forfeit be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whoever, comes, whoever comes out last. <laughs> but we've made our predictions for the WBBL Cup matches coming up soon. But I'll, I'll release them later on this week. But uh, I think we've made a strong start. Yeah, I think so as well. I guess if anyone disagrees, make sure you comment why as well. You think the other team's going to win or if you agree as well. Because I'm intrigued about what other people think as well. How the, how the, um, the, game, the first batch of games are going to go. I mean, I'm a little bit biased with my Newcastle connections. So I might have them winning the league at some point, but I'm, I'm sure everyone will agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that. I think some would say they got lucky last season to get to the finals. Oh, oh. <laughs> Did you start already? Started you started already, haven't you I? started already, throwing shade on the Eagles. <laughs> uh, kind of where else do you see this podcast going? And so we've got our predictions league. What else do you kind of see us talking about or or doing as well, part of it so um i love the fact that you get people onto the show as well so even if we um don't necessarily have someone every single week just to have quotes here and there i think it's nice as well what the wbbl's um doing now with some of the girls putting in quotes about how they think the season's gonna go so i think it will definitely um switch well, their opinions will switch up as the league kind of moves forward. So it'll be nice to just try and keep in contact with the players to to just get a feel of how they think things are going. Also, we still got Ava's Play of the Week as well. We have, oh, up, have up, that. upgraded this year. We've got oh. badges. Last year, she made cards for all of the winners and we sent them off. This year, nice. they get a card and a badge. So, I mean... Players need to be up in their game. Yeah, yeah. So they win <laughs> <Exactly>. the award. <laughs> exactly. Um, and to add as well, like to be able to talk to you as well about how the games are going. So there's already been a couple of preseason games, and it's nice to be able to talk to you and hopefully give some insight as well to uh, people who haven't necessarily watched uh, or couldn't uh, watch the. The games because I know some games clash so you can't watch everything so yeah to to help people understand how another game went or something like that that'll be that'll be good. Hey you mentioned the Eagles preseason shock win against Leicester. Well yeah. is it really a shock because Leicester doesn't have their point guard yet. Okay. Um, okay. So that could be a big thing. Point guards are legit one of the most important uh, positions in the on the court so hey maybe when she's back they might turn the whole team around a lot of changes at Leicester as well so <laughs> it might take them a little bit of time to gel and yeah new coach and that kind of thing yeah exactly whereas Newcastle yeah they've already got their style so so we mentioned Newcastle win the league which may or may not happen but one of the teams that are favoured to be kind of right up the top is of course the London Lions uh, but before the league season starts, they've got this Euro Cup to think about. Um, kind of, what what are your initial thoughts on on a, B, a WBBL team playing in in Europe? I think it's amazing. I remember when I attended Barkin Abbey Academy and Mark kind of saying it's his dream to have a Euro Cup team, and it, now that it's actually well, it's in the process of happening. It's it's amazing to see because it's going to bring so much light to the UK as well and the WBBL. So 
I think it, it's just going to be great. It's going to up the game as well. Teams can also mimic what the Lions are doing too. So we may have more teams in the future in Europe as well. So I think it's, it's great. And that kind of leads us into our special guest for today. I would say GB Basketball Royalty. Um, so we're going to invite Azania Stewart uh, to our, our podcast episode today. Uh, I can't wait to get chatting to her and see what, what insight she's got. Because um, there hasn't been a lot coming out of London. Um, yeah. The media side of things, there hasn't been a lot coming out. So it'll be interesting to see kind of where her head's at and, and how the team are preparing. Exactly. Zania Stewart, welcome to episode one of the WBBL Review. Thanks for having me. And I'm privileged to be the first episode. How fantastic. I mean, I know well, I told you last year. Big. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to you last year when you came um, to join Leicester, and um, we we talked a little bit about kind of your decision to come back. Was it always the plan to continue on? Um, no, the plan was just I don't know. The pandemic wasn't planning for anyone, so. Um, I definitely enjoyed my two months with Leicester. I had a really uh, lovely time with them and really ignited my passion again for the for the game. Um, and then obviously Mark was trying to put this team together to get ready for the Euro Cup. So and he just said, look, whatever you can give me, I'm happy to have. Um, and for me, it wasn't even just about like obviously Euro Cup, but I wanted to play at home. Um, I'm originally, I'm a Londoner and I've just been away for so long, even, you know, throughout my career, high school, college, I've just missed so much of life and to have the nice balance of both social family and basketball was really like a no brainer for me. Um, and that's really why I joined um, the London Lions. Well, obviously, so I know, Obviously, I know you as well. Um, and just being at home and then you're working with your sister still as well, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, how are you finding like balancing and balancing that out? Because have you actually worked a job before and play basketball? Like, is that your first time doing this? Um, yeah, actually, when you say it like that, I've worked jobs before, but uh, the last time I balanced a job and basketball was in high school in America. I had a little, um, I worked in like a little hotel on the weekends. Um, but yeah, this is, it's really lovely. Obviously my sister has a facial, um, business called Blimey Beauty. Shout her out. Um, out. Yep. <laughs> shout her out. Um, and that's like our family business and it's so nice to, obviously help her but also be with my siblings and um you know my mum's so proud so yeah juggling's been a bit difficult um I'm not gonna lie I booked like a 20 minute gap between my first client so I can take a little power nap in the back um after practice but it's she's been really really accommodating and yeah it's been it's been difficult I'm, I don't work full-time I'm still like part-time but I just help her out where I can um but yeah, no, it's it's been been a bit wild. It's more just scheduling and getting myself into a routine. And uh, we train in East London, but I'm from North London. So it's more just the commute and getting used to it. But I mean, hey, everyone does a nine to five. So sure. I think it, it's time to somewhat transition into real world. Yeah. And I guess it's nice for you as well, because it is just part time. So like eventually when you do decide to fully retire I guess that yeah. pathway is a lot easier always there involved. yeah yeah always there and obviously I was commentating and I will carry on commentating which I love so that's also another line of um, work I've been doing as well mm. which how long have you been in training for how long have I been training for like with with the current squad like when did you get together oh. Um, we've been together a month now, just over a month. Um, there was a GB camp and we literally joined, we got together right after that. So over, just over a month, maybe. Um, so yeah, but now the final squad is all together. 
um, our Americans were the last to join because uh, of visas, whatever. Uh, so the squad is finally all together, literally two days before, maybe one day before the game. So it'll be interesting, um, but it's game time and it's put the ball in the bucket. So there we go. Yeah. So one thing like I'm pretty sure everyone else is curious about is why everything from the London Lions is so hidden. Like, for example, we everyone knew you went out to France um, you played the game. Obviously, we couldn't watch um, any of it, and there's not really been much social media. So I know mm. that myself and other people are aching to know, like, how has your preseason games been going? Um, can you give us some insight on, like, how you think the team's gelling? And just yeah, a little bit about yes. Um, sadly, it's I know everyone's wanting to watch, but um, social media has been lacking a little bit so um but they're getting on onto it because I feel like this is such a big moment for women's basketball and so exciting um not only obviously the WBBL but like for us to have potentially a team to qualify into the Euro um Euro Cup is all the English teams will want to get behind us like even if it is competitive within our league there's still somewhat of like actually no we could be that next team we're striving for that um but it's been it's been really good actually to be honest um the girls have been really good really you know easy to get to know we've been gelling off the court on the court it's just been getting used to playing you know with Kennedy she's always looking to pass and so I've always got to have my hands ready so it's just learning each other a lot of them obviously were together um and there's some pieces me Holly obviously who played together so that was a really good um, mm. combination and then Joe's coming in so yeah it's been it's been way better than I thought to be honest and I'm excited I'm just ready to play I'm over practicing <laughs> <laughs> I'm just ready for the the game. Like that. <laughs> oh, I'm over it I'm over it <laughs> so how much do you know about your opposition tomorrow um, well, we've had scout and we've watched film uh, and uh, they had a friendly against Tenerife, which was on YouTube. So we got to watch um, our coaches have broke stuff down. So we've looked at that. Uh, they've got a fair few Americans. Um, so we know a fair bit. Uh, we've talked about their set plays and what we're going to do. Um, and then realists, once we've got over that, we just worry about ourselves. We've got the you know overall gist of them um but it is a two game home and away so whatever happens um it's important that we play the whole 40 minutes because it is uh every point counts so um that's kind of what we've really harped on and yeah and then we'll go to Grand Canaria in a couple of days so let's get this first one under the belt really mm-hmm. And do you feel a little bit more nervous playing? Because I know you've played pretty much big games, huge crowds. Am I nervous? Um, yeah, because it's in Crystal Palace. Are your family coming as well? Is it going to be like yeah. extra special? Do you feel like any pressure, uh, I guess, from like the WBBL English basketball to kind of like succeed and get into the qualifications? Because on the men's side, they always kind of fail to to yeah. get through that qualify, um, qualifying stage. So how do you feel? Well, no like- doubt. Yeah, I'll be pushing for us to win. And, you know, you've played with me and how passionate I am. Um, but no, I don't really get to like pressure or like nervous, but I always like to keep the nerves. I like to keep that butterfly nervous feeling. If you get rid of it and push it away, that's when you really lose yourself so for me I always prepare the same and I really learned that I guess younger if I'm playing USA my more Brittany Griner or if I'm playing I don't know whoever Albania or I don't know who whatever team is not very good and you think that you're going to be I still prepare the same way um just yeah. so then my routines are the same I feel good um I've done all my prep work and I trust in my prep work so game time for me I just have a little sing a dance I relax get my shots up and then just get into the flow of the game so um it'll be nice also because obviously because of 
you know what uh, there's been no crowd so it's going to yeah. be so nice to I feel like the arena is going to be packed and a nice vibe in there and and just to feel the adrenaline again you know when you score mm. and the crowd goes rah and you're like yeah, yeah. And you don't really get tired when people are shouting so um I'm really more excited for that I think you talk about tiredness there and it for people who don't know, you play Thursday the 23rd, the home game, and then Thursday the 30th is the away game at Gran Canaria. But sandwiched yeah. in between that, you've got the two WBBL Cup, Cup games game. for the weekend. I mean, yeah. how's, how's the squad feeling about the busyness of having four games within the week? Yeah, we we haven't really discussed it, tell you the truth. I know my assistant coach, coaches sorry, have been, because obviously they're into scout, so they're two three four games ahead of us where for myself I really like to focus in um one game at a time because this for tomorrow's game is the most important do you know what I mean and then we'll we'll take one step at a time and then the next the Saturday and the Sunday and we'll just approach it um as it comes I think you'll just get too overwhelmed if okay the first of season and Euro Cup and I just I like to just steady Poly poly, it is in Swahili means slowly, slowly. And how are your teammates as well? Because you've kind of, if you think about it, you've got a young team. Very how do young. you think, yeah, how do you think they're going to cope in terms of when you guys qualify to the Euro yeah. Cup? How do you compare like to previous teams you've been on to yeah. um, this team? And obviously, you are a legit vet. So how are you going to carry your experience and try to help them? Well, thank you for saying when we win. Um, I like that. Put that into the air. (laughs) Thank you, Melissa. Um, Definitely a young squad. And I felt I had this kind of when I was with Leicester, a really young squad. And this one's even younger. Um, It definitely my age is showing. (laughs) I'm like, whoa, some of these I'm like 10, 12 years older. Um, But they're really they're willing to learn and they want to know and and so I just try and help them as much as I can on and off the court and anything that I see you know I speak to them on the side um our coaches are really good with them um but yeah I think they just need guidance and this is the thing with the younger generation and the game's so different but they're enthusiastic they're willing to learn um and yeah they really I don't know I I find being a super vet now I just I don't know it's so difficult it's getting harder I think mentally and physically um yeah I don't know I'm gonna I just try and do as much as I can for them on and off the court and lead in different ways and I've always been a leader I've been I'm a naturally born leader so that's kind of what I did and I was kind of um this team obviously they had like Kennedy they've got Chantel they had uh, Shanice they've got big characters that were already established so this team was already legit before I came um so it was really a nice balance that there are leaders and I'm just assisting them do you know what I mean so yeah uh, I'm really happy with where we are I think we have a lot more to do um but we're at the beginning of a of a journey and we just have to trust the process of getting to the end I think you hit the nail on the head there that the kind of the core of the team from last year which won two trophies have, has been retained as well as adding obviously the quality of yourself and, and Holly and, and uh, Joel Eden coming in as well I think I think it's a very strong kind of base for that team just to talk about Joe Leadham, um, she's got her daughter with her. I saw you guys posted while you guys were working out. One would hold her, the next would do some crunches, pass yeah. her along. Uh, so how has that been? Because I know a lot of people, especially in this country, hasn't experienced motherhood as well as playing and then being a teammate yeah. of of that. So how how's Joe Leadham been coping? And Yeah, it's great. Been? great question um to be honest and we're just trying to make it the norm because um I think she gets more worried about like um her name's Isla baby Isla making noise and she's such a good baby like honestly we hardly hear her um and obviously she's still breastfeeding and she's still trying to like get into her routine and 
And so I think for her, it's such a new journey in itself. But obviously we look up to that. And, uh, you know, if we all want to be mothers one day, but the fact that she can still play and be a mum is amazing. It's, she, I think Isla's five, turning six months old. So she's still really young. Um, and I think she, I think Joe's struggling more in the fact of she wants to be Joe right but yeah. you have to remember you just had a baby less than six months ago so um and I just think that's more her thing um but it's been really really lovely having Isla she comes to most practices um and Jo's been great she hasn't really missed a beat in the fact of being at practices and and then going straight home um and her her mum's uh, looking after Isla in practices or she comes with with her so it's been it's been really wonderful um and so nice you know I think this is it we have to understand and I think as women and maybe just in in the workplace it always gets pushed aside or something so taboo or not so in your face like yes women breastfeed yes we have to do that if it's at halftime if it's in the end of a quarter like we've got to make these things normal and um, women can come back after having a baby and playing and working. And I think she's a great advocate for that. So I'm really proud of her. Right. And for me as well, because I've been on uh, two teams actually where um, one of my teammates is a mum and the kids come in and it's actually nice because it's like a breath of fresh air. Like you come in, you can't, frown at all because you look at the kids they're running up and down and it makes you feel like oh, okay yeah I've got more energy now yeah and then also yeah. got Helen Naylor as well who's right been Helen reactive to about posting um I think there was one t- uh, one post about her breastfeeding at half time so yeah. like you're completely right about let's make it the norm because it, it is like yeah why we away like um we are women and we can do that and it's a beautiful thing so yeah. let's embrace it yeah mark i guess you're sitting there <laughs> just like <laughs> you, you know, know but they... even for men i feel like for men it's really they feel un- uncomfortable but you know once you do become a father you you start to understand that and you know i don't know i just think even for men to not be uncomfortable around it i think that's a learning lesson as well like wow yeah women can you know have a baby come back can play can be at work can do it all like we're we're really really strong and I don't think we get enough credit for it or for even fathers you know yeah. there's so yeah look I find, really it difficult. I find it difficult doing uh, an interview every couple of weeks or something without my kids barging in and stuff so I salute anyone who uh, comes back to elite sport and, and plays and, yeah. and makes as you say make it work and make it the norm yeah exactly so I know we've mentioned a few times how excited we are to kind of see how you how the team gels and that in the European adventure but just moving away from Europe how, how do you feel about the the standard in the WBBL this season and kind of teams of I think have really up their game in terms of the players they're bringing in and um, how, how yeah. do you see it? Well, even just playing last year, I was really happy with the standard. Obviously, it's not where it needs to be, but I definitely think it's making steps, um, you know, getting overseas and European players, um, you know, and being able to play at a higher level. Obviously, what's great, even with um, London Lions, is managing to get our homegrown, a lot of our homegrown players back on one team, which is amazing. Um, but WBBL, we have such good, like, I don't even know how to say it. Like, we have good, in, not intentions, what's my word that I'm looking for? Um, the enthusiasm, we have all the things, we've got the players, and now we just need to get behind it and push it. The same way kind of like netball, sadly, to bring it up, but they're doing something good that we may need to follow in the fact of marketing it well, getting TV deals, you know, getting crowds behind it, going into schools. And and realistically, basketball has had that, um, even when we were in the Olympics. And I feel like my whole career, I've been pushing for this game to be where it needs to be. Um, and we really just need to get behind the marketing aspect of it, get it out there. 
um because you know I feel like it is an amazing sport and it is fun to watch and it is a great you know day out with the kids to watch or you know I've got kids that look up to me and want to be the next Zania did I ever think anyone wanted to be the next me like wow you know mm. so um I feel like the WNBA has some um, WMA, the WBBL yeah. has something special that uh it can really you know expand and 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 do really well with so but in terms of players I think the game is getting much better um you know women are putting in the work and right now women's sports in general is on fire is is pushing the way in every aspect in women's sports and women in in the workplace we're, like we're coming for you and and you have to listen because we're, we're coming in loud so um I'm really happy to be back in London to be a part of this next generation this next push Euro Cup and you know I don't know how many more years I can play but I'm really proud to, through my whole career, I've been pushing, you know, there's interviews of me crying or whatever, or all these embarrassing things, but that's how passionate I, I am and have been and just happy that we're in a place that we're still pushing forward. Yeah. And I guess for us as well, it's, it's nice to have someone with all that experience come back and almost just give back to <clears throat> to the league and to all the younger people that want to potentially follow, like you said, yeah, follow your footsteps, want to be the next Zania. And I think when I was, let's say, 16, 17, going to Bark and Abbey, we didn't really get that much. So for right. me, it's perfect for the younger generation to see us all coming back to England and say, like, hey, like, let's push on making the WBBL one of the best leagues in the world like why not mm -hmm. who doesn't want to yeah. come to England to play right it's a it's a great place to play like London all different cities that have these teams they're all great places um and appealing so why not use it you know so yeah. um but yeah I'm excited for the season it's going to be my full full season like I only played two months last season and I'm like oh my gosh how am I going to get through a whole season but um I'll I'll manage I guess kind of uh yeah the um what we called me and Joe calling ourselves the antique road show but we got told off by her dad that we're not allowed to call ourselves that um but yeah no I'm really excited I just I really just want to get tomorrow going and game day here and and play because there's a lot there's still so much you know we went to France which was great I think especially for the younger girls to play at that level you know playing against Celine de Merck uh, an amazing historical icon in French basketball and to feel that pressure to feel that speed I think that trip for us was yes we didn't win but it was more than winning and losing that that game we had to feel European basketball so um I think we're going to learn a lot. Uh, hopefully we can, we will get the win tomorrow, but we'll, we'll have to really figure out a few things as on the fly in the 40 yeah. minutes. So um, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be a challenge, whatever way it goes. I know I'm kind of speaking, not just for myself, but the whole kind of WBL family, because I've seen post Helen Naylor's point today about the kind of good luck London and, there's yeah. lots of players getting involved and teams saying good luck. So I know I'm speaking for everyone when I say, like, we really hope it goes well tomorrow. Um, you can do us proud. Thank you That's so much. And I honestly, I honestly feel that, like, in obviously there's a rivalry once you get to teams, but <laughs> overall this is bigger than, than everyone, you know, everything, yeah. and if that makes sense. Like, everyone is really backing us, and I really feel that. I don't feel any animosity I don't feel any they know it like if we can do well then it really helps us as a league as women it help. it just I just feel the support honestly um so hopefully we can do not only ourselves but the league and and our friends and family really proud it's been an absolute pleasure uh, catching up this evening as I say sorry we're about the uh, for... few technical difficulties <laughs> around here <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> hey, we got we got there in the end yeah we did, <laughs> yeah, we yeah, did. We did. Um, 
Melita, are you coming tomorrow or no? You, you no, I'm exhausted. We've got practice. So we finished practice at six o'clock. Okay, I mean, and then I'll, I'll send over the link. I, sh- I think the link goes tomorrow, out tomorrow, so. Okay, yeah, perfect. And I think my mum's going, actually. I think my mum and dad are going to go. Fantastic. Love the yeah, support. Yeah, they love you guys. So. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Yeah. Well, no thank problem. you so much. I'm so happy to be part of your first p- podcast, right? Yeah. First of, first of many. For us together, yeah. As a crew. Okay, I love that. So let me know if I can get any, you know, I've got hookups with Joe Leadham, Holly, Kennedy, yeah, yeah. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much and Thank good you. luck this season yeah. to and both of you. Yeah, same. And have a good night. Yeah. So that was uh, fascinating hearing from Zania before the big game uh, against Gran Canaria. How do you think it's going to go? course London's gonna get the dub they have to <laughs> by force they need to win <laughs> I will not accept anything else so yeah I think you know they've got a great team they they do it seems like they'll gel pretty well as well so I'll be tuned in and hopefully not biting my nails too much because they will win by <laughs> at least 10 but we'll see <laughs> yeah I think I think I heard on the hoops fix, hoops fix um thing that they put out a day um, they're talking about how, how they're gelling off court, on court, and it's, it, they do seem to be really tight. And that was one thing people were worried about with this, this kind of star studded lineup. Will they gel together as a team? But it does seem like they're, they're together in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, we've got that massive game for the WBBL, the, the European Adventure for London, but we've also got the opening weekend where most teams are, are playing. In, in some form or another. Any matches that stand out for you? Are you how, how much are you looking forward to it? Well, for me personally, playing for Gloucester, um, we've, we've been concentrating on Cardiff, Leicester and Oakland. So for us, it's our first games, like official games anyway. So it's going to be a test for us. But um, yeah, it'll be just nice to see um, everyone else and all these new people coming in from various countries or English people returning it's going to be nice to see how how other teams are because the league's going to be I think at a much higher standard than it was last year so everyone's going to be watching everyone I think and that opening Friday night you've got Sheffield against Nottingham so Sheffield's first game back after their little hiatus last year and Caledonia against Durham kind of two unknown quantities I guess this season Although we have had some signing news from Durham today. Finally. <laughs> we've, got some, we've got some news. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they kick us off on Friday night. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll definitely tune in after, after my games. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to record episode one with you. And yes. we're going to make it a weekly thing. And we're going to kind of make sure we review all of, all of the talking points of the WBBL, whether that be the cup games, the league games, the European games, and I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get on it every week. Yeah, this is where it's gonna be. At. Any information, any questions, we've got the answers. <laughs> and if we don't have them, we'll find them out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you've if you've liked what we've done, just give us a, a like, a click, a subscribe, whatever you do for these podcasts. Just just get on it, um, and we'll see you next week for episode two.